If you've thought about investing in the Dominican Republic real estate market, but are afraid of being scammed, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna share the one thing that you need to do to significantly limit the chances of you being scammed. And I'm also gonna share the three things that I consider when I'm going to invest with anyone, United States, Dominican Republic, or otherwise, that I think will help you even further look into the deal you wanna do and avoid being scammed. Let's dive in. I've gotten a bunch of DMs where people are telling me that they feel as though they've been scammed by a real estate deal that they've invested in, in the Dominican Republic. And look, I, I don't know the whole story. Maybe they have been, maybe they haven't been, maybe it's a misunderstanding, maybe it's not a scam, but more of a, hey, the project is just taking longer or whatever. A scam is, is when somebody's actually doing something to you that is illegal below board, they've taken your money and run. A scam is not like it's taking way longer for them to finish it. If the money you invested is still going toward the project, then so be it. That said, what I wanna do with this video is tell you how you can avoid being scammed and or how you can limit the chances of getting into deals that do have those frustrating delays. Now, let me be clear, nothing is going to eliminate any of this for you. You still have to do your due diligence. I'm gonna give you some tools, some tactics, some tips, but at the end of the day, you need to make the decision based on good information that you look into. And the other thing to remember is this is not going to be an American experience. No matter how much you want it to be, it can get close, but there are going to be cultural differences, ways of being, all of that, that just are not going to be avoidable if you're doing business in another country. The reason why you want to, the reason why I am, is because you see the potential, the future, the upside, or you just wanna move here. Or I should say, there. As I record this, I'm doing a one month vacation back in sunny Michigan. It's August, so it actually is sunny. And we're returning to DR in September for our kids to start school, which will be our third year in the Dominican Republic. If you're new to the channel, by the way, my name is Jamie Gruber. I moved to DR in 2022 and I share everything I can about living there, buying there, real estate investing, and so on, because I'm just starting to do all of that stuff with real estate investing myself. All right, so let's start with this question that popped up in my DMs. So here it is. Jamie, what's up from the States? I happen to live in New York City, Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. It's my best Brooklyn accent. My first name is, we'll leave that blank. Please help. I'm looking to move and buy a condo in Punta Cana DR. I'll notice. I've noticed you're living in Punta Cana. Can you refer me to three real estate people? I have one, but I'm not sure I'm confident just yet with her. And as the conversation progressed in through DM, this is what came out of it. It's a pre-construction project, trying not to get ripped off. You can understand my whole life savings is into this. I got to get this right. So look, tip number one, and this doesn't even have to do with the one move you can make or the three tips I'm gonna give you more broadly, is never invest your entire life savings in anything. Not in Dominican Republic, not in a property here, not in your own home, not in the stock market, never invest. This is my theory. Never invest your life savings into one thing ever. Diversify a bit, whatever that means to you. In fact, talk to your financial advisor, talk to your CPA, talk to friends and family, what's best for you. I'm just telling you my perspective. I'm not an advisor. I don't pretend to be. I don't play one on YouTube. I'm just giving you my thoughts. So all the disclaimers aside, that's what we're going to dive into today. Let's cut to the chase. The one thing that you can do in order to avoid being scammed, to limit the possibility of being scammed or hiring that wrong developer or hiring that wrong attorney or getting in bed with the wrong company or whatever it might be. It's very, very, very simple. You need to hire a great realtor. What does great realtor mean? To me, this is what it means, especially in the context of the Dominican Republic, knowing that realtors do not need to be licensed. A great realtor is a full-time, professional, licensed, and volume-driven real estate agent, meaning they've done stuff. They've actually created value for other buyers in the past. They've sold properties. They're on both sides of the deal. They have reputational risk if they end up screwing you. Look at a great realtor as the top of the pyramid. You get a really, really great one, the developer, the lawyer, the property manager, everything Everything else you need, they have access to. Look, let me get this out of the way and help you with this because the question always is, well, where do I find this great realtor? I just gave you the profile that you should look for. If you really want more help with that, if you want a direct referral, somebody that I work with, somebody that I trust, somebody that I see as being exactly one of these great realtors as, as I described, down in the caption of this video, there's a link. It says, do you need a realtor in DR? Just click on it, fill out a 10 question-ish form and we'll get you connected to one. Listen, if you close
close with one of these realtors, they will pay me a commission. I just wanna be very upfront with that, but do what you want. Don't use them, use somebody else, whatever it is, but just make sure you're not using your tia or tio who does some real estate on the side. In fact, I was watching a channel recently where a person is promoting real estate as a realtor here in the Dominican Republic. And I was like, wow, this content's really good. And then somewhere through there, in the middle of it, they referenced, oh, and I have this other business I run. And I was instantly like, no. I would not work with that realtor. They may be great, they may be reputable, they may be smart, they may be of, of good conscience, but to navigate this market, you gotta be all in. If you're gonna take my money and invest it in something here, I need you to be all in. And I also need you to be local. That may sound kind of obvious, but I can't tell you how many people reach out to say, hey, I live in Miami or Texas or wherever, and I'm licensed in DR, would love to work with you. And I instantly tell them, thank you, no. If you're not here or there in the Dominican Republic where I will be and normally am, you get it, I won't work with you. It's not hate, it's, I'm sure you're a great person, you might be the best realtor in the world, but there's some truths that I know living in the Dominican Republic and one of them is you gotta be local to win. The connections that you form when you're on the ground are of absolute maximum value. You just can't, I don't care how good you are, can't duplicate the ability to be local and connected to the local market and the local happenings. You ain't there, don't talk to me. All right, I was a little aggressive. You could talk to me, but just know that I won't do business. That's my standard. You take that, do it the same way, or maybe you completely disagree. Let me know, drop it down in the comments. But find a great full-time reputable realtor. Here's another little trick for me. I look at realtors' socials. How honest are they? There is a fairly large group that I think is probably reputable here in the Dominican Republic. I won't say who they are. Maybe you can guess. They're big, they're everywhere, but man, they're realtors. The way they're realtors market, it just, maybe they need a little bit more control over how their realtors put things out there. I'll see things like down payment listed as what looks like the price, really tricking people. Again, they may reveal the price a little bit further down in the fine print of the reel or YouTube short, but it's like, listen, I don't even like that you're trying to draw me in. Don't clickbait me with money. Look, I'll clickbait you as a guy on YouTube. I want you to watch my video, but whatever. It doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time. But if you're gonna clickbait me about my money, I don't like that. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm sensitive, but the point is to me, not only look at the firm, but look at the realtors and how do they show up on social? Are they honest brokers or do they seem to be a little bit below board? There's another realtor locally that I follow that's interesting to me, but just something in my gut, mm, something in my gut, just I don't, I can't see doing business with them. Trust that. That goes for even the realtors I refer you. If something about them is just off, move on. It's gotta be about you and getting the maximum for your investment. What I want more than anything is for there to be confidence in the real estate market in the Dominican Republic. Because man, when you get here, and again, keep this in mind guys, I moved here for one year. Like, hey, it's be fun, we'll be in paradise, we'll go away, my family will get some experience, the kids are gonna be able to say they went to school for a year. And then we just haven't left. And part of that is because I've just sort of grown this affinity and this love for the country. And I hate seeing the fact that bad actors, even though they're a smaller percentage than the good actors, are creating a perception. So for me, overall, I want you to have a great experience in real estate. And I want me also to have that great experience as I start to navigate my first purchase so that this scam thing goes away. But I digress. Summing it up, get a great realtor. If you need help with it, click the link below. Happy to refer you. By the way, and this is a secondary thing, if you need a lawyer, I have one as well I can refer you. Again, there's a second link, I'll add it below for you just to fill out a form and the attorney will get in touch with you. You know, keep in mind, I said before about you're not gonna have an exactly American experience. It is Dominican culture. It is very much like, you know, you might need to ask a few more questions of anybody you deal with here. It's just the way Dominican culture is. Like, you may not get all the information, you gotta ask a few questions. The lawyer I work with, for instance, like I, I we were down a road and then I asked a question and he gave me all the information I needed I'm like, why wouldn't you tell me that up front? He's like, oh, I just didn't think it was all that relevant for you. I don't know, you didn't ask. <laughs> so I refer him still, not because he's like, oh my God, this guy's locked down, he's infallible, but because he's honest. And I know where to reach him, I know where to find him. And he works with top realtors in the area, which make, gives me confidence that he's not gonna run off with my money or guide me in a place that gets me in trouble in any way. Okay, with a great realtor in hand, they're going to start showing you projects and developments and everything else that you can invest in. Awesome. Again, you need to do your due diligence. Never abdicate. I don't care if it's Dominican Republic, United States, never abdicate. And for me, 
I have three things that I look for in anything I'm investing in specific to real estate. You ready for them? Because here they come. First and foremost, have you done a full cycle project? What does full cycle project mean? That means have you committed to a project have you started construction on that project? Have you sold the properties in that project? And have you delivered the project completely and in full? Right away, that will clear the room from many developers. Some developers are on their first project in country. They may have done one in Mexico or somewhere else, but they haven't done it in the Dominican Republic. A first time project for me gives me pause. Doesn't mean I never would, but it gives me pause. A developer with a full cycle in country project? Absolutely. That's number one for me when I'm vetting the developer that the realtor refers to me. Number two is I want scar tissue. Let me tell you a little story about the United States investment market. I invest in commercial real estate, multifamily apartment buildings. And people were asking like, man, there's all these people that you can invest with. Like, how do you know who to invest with? And I said, I ask one question of the hundred people that want my investment dollar. I'll ask one question of all of them. How many of you existed before 2008? Honestly, maybe three of them have their hands up. The rest of them are gone. Doesn't mean that they're bad. Doesn't mean I haven't and won't invest with people. In fact, I have invested with people that didn't exist before 08. But again, something for me that makes me more confident is like, okay, I want that story. What were you doing before 08? How did you navigate it? What happened? And how are you are where you are today? Because 08 was in a colossal crash. So those that rolled through that and have been successful on the other end, they get more points from me for where my investment dollar is gonna go. So to me, from a developer perspective, it's the same thing. How long has that developer been in business here? Have they seen some cycles? Have they been through some stuff? Have they built some projects in country? I wanna know how experienced they are. And even more than that, the scar tissue element. Have you been screwed? How so? What happened? Tell me about it. What'd you learn from it? I don't like hearing developers or anybody say like, I've never lost. I'm like, oof. Sometime you will, and you only learn from the losses. So I wanna know that you lost. And when you lost, I wanna know what you lost and what you learned from it and how you have put processes or systems in place to avoid that kind of loss again. Again, doesn't mean they won't lose and you won't lose. It nothing guarantees you you won't lose. But I feel way better with somebody that is lost and is still here than somebody that's just been up and to the right and has never experienced loss so that they can apply it to their day to day. My third criteria is that they have somebody that is significant local. In the United States, the project I invest in in Denver and in LA and in Austin, we have a specific team member, a high level team member in one of those cities. Somebody can go to the project. I mentioned it before. I want my realtor to be local. I want my developer to be local as well. Look, I invested with Boardwalk Properties. This is run by Cheryl Henderson. Cheryl Henderson is on every billboard in Punta Cana. She's been around 20 years. She's been scammed. She has scar tissue. She is local. She does have projects with Boardwalk that have gone all the way through. So when I invested in Maple Suites in Cortecito, some people are like, oh, but what about this? And what about that in the area? And there's flooding and this. I'm like, all good. I'm more confident investing in the location and the developer having these criteria in place. Done a project has scar tissue and is local. In fact, I know right where she lives. So for me, that gives me more confidence that my dollars and my effort and my money and my time are being protected. So recapping real quick here, top of the pyramid, get a great, great realtor. And I defined that earlier for you. That takes care of a lot of other things for you. It increases the credibility of all the other things, developer, lawyer, so on and so forth. And if you need a realtor, I can help you with that. Just click the link down in the caption below. And then once you're vetting a project or a developer, the three keys to me are, one, have they done a full cycle project before? Two, do they have some scar tissue? They've been around and they had some pain and they suffered some loss. And three, are they local? Now, just getting right back to this. These things don't mean that they are locked down, guarantee 100%. You will not be scammed. You will not lose your money. And also, these things are not exclusive, meaning it's like, I've invested with people that have not fit these criteria, but I just have to feel good about it. And I have to understand that I'm putting my money maybe more at risk than if I follow my investment criteria 100%. Maybe a better tactic for all of you is, what's your thesis? I've shared mine, I hope it helps all of you. And if you wanna use it, by all means. But what's your investment thesis? In fact, let's help each other. Drop it down below. What are the tights for you? What are your one, two, three? I've got full cycle projects, scar tissue and local. What are your three, two, four, five? Drop them down below, help each other out and everybody can read the comments. But you wanna avoid or limit your chance of being scammed or losing your money. That's what I got for you. By the way, I know people are gonna ask, hey, tell me more about this boardwalk project. No problem. Do me a favor and comment boardwalk down below and I'll be happy to get you the information you need to get in touch with them. And same thing guys, being completely transparent. The way I fund this channel, the way I make myself able to create more content is to figure out ways to monetize the channel. And this is one of the ways that I'm doing it. So I wanna be really clear with that for two reasons. One, 
do what you got to do. Wherever you want to go, just make sure you find that reputable person. And two, I just want to be clear. I want to make sure that there's full transparency on the channel at all times. I want to share one last thing with all of you. Once you make the purchase, once you make the move, and this is from my experience coming back to the United States for this month after being gone for two years, budget a housekeeper. You need to trust me on this. It's not like, oh, that's so cute. They'll do laundry, they'll clean your stuff. No, like I don't see my wife anymore in the United States. In DR, our housekeeper, our lady, she can keep an eye on the kids in the morning. We can go to the gym together. When we're done at the end of the day and we're exhausted and we're getting the kids to bed, there's no dishes to do. Like we can all do it as a family. Now, and this is American life, I remember it now. It's like I go to the gym and then she goes to the gym, especially in summer when the kids are home. And then at the end of the day, we're exhausted. We gotta get the kids down. It's like, okay, I'll bring them upstairs. You go do the dishes or vice versa. And pretty much from the time I wake up all day, I see her in passing like two ships in the night. And the only time we actually see each other is when we collapse in bed at 10 o'clock at night after all the housework and everything is done. Totally different experience when you live in the Dominican Republic. And by the way, my wife doesn't have a day job. So it's not even like we're two, a two working whatever household. So buy the property and budget the cleaning lady. You just need to trust me on that. One last thing. If you want more on this and more depth of what I talk about from a standpoint of investing and living in the Dominican Republic, I should tell you about this more, but down below there's another link. I got links everywhere to get my newsletter. I deliver it every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, and it's always a topic that I think is relevant for you as you consider investing or moving or just life in the Dominican Republic. Epiphanies, things I've learned, life lessons, all of that. It's just more content. It's free. Happy to deliver it to you if you want to just click down there and register. That's AMA Friday, everybody. Drop questions below. I'll be happy to feature them in a future AMA Friday. While I'm asking for everything, subscribe, like, Make a comment, do everything, do everything for me.